Gaming Fitness, Jesse Morgan. We only have two validators here, but very quickly, you'll start getting many different functions where you want to ensure that all the inputs are correct. And many of those inputs take very, very specific constraints, not just simple things such as verifying data types, zip codes, people's names and addresses, very specific items to your business of how your database works. Sometimes you're dealing with legacy code that has to be in a certain format and you're converting it to something else. So you need ways to verify those inputs. And if you fail, do everything in your power to explain exactly what you did wrong and more verbosity is better. Running many validators is great because we can know exactly why that particular predicate failed, but returning true or false isn't always great if you have a ton of these. So we're gonna use something called a checker. All it is is a wrapper around read.reduce. What we've done is added a new checker function here, and what it does is it takes a list of validators. Again, a validator is just a function with an error code attached. That's all it is. So you have a predicate function which returns true or false, and if it returns false, you can see why it failed. That's up to you to supply why it failed. Is string that comes with Lodash? It doesn't tell you why it's not a string. It just says it's not. You have the opportunity to add metadata on why your functions, or in this case, your predicates are failing. Checkers know how to deal with predicates, specifically validators, which are predicates with errors attached. It'll loop through them and it'll reduce. All reduce says is say, take all the predicates that you pass in. In our case, we're only gonna pass in two. And if they return true, we're good. Just pass the errors back and that's array. If you start with an empty array and everything passes, you're gonna end up with an empty array. That means nothing went wrong. No errors were added. However, if your predicate function returns false, for example, if you're checking for a string and you pass in a number, it's gonna return false and you're gonna go ahead and add why did that fail into that list of errors. If you only have one validator in here, you're gonna get one error back in the array. If you have nine, and they're all looking for string-like properties and you pass in a number, you're probably gonna get nine errors back in your array. This verbosity is helpful. However, you only have to have one function to actually handle it. Let's go ahead and apply that in a simple thing up here. We'll say const port check up here and we'll say const check string. We'll say checker. We'll pass in our two validators, which is string validator and not blank. And you can pass in as many as you want. Have to pass at least one, otherwise it's not a checker. Now we get a, an array back. So you're going to start dealing with arrays of errors rather than true or false. Check string. We'll go ahead and log out these errors so you can see them on the screen. So we get errors. It's an empty array. That means that cow is good. However, if you pass a string, but we leave it blank, it's not going to trigger this one. This is going to return true, but this one or this one, either way you look at it, is going to return false. So when we rerun it again, we get, if it's a string, it's empty, cannot be a blank string. So we can't do that. If we pass in a one, it's gonna fail both the is string and not blank. So these two validators will fire false and put this into the array. So we run it again, we now get two errors. You can see in the array, it has two items in there. When you're writing unit tests for this, you're actually looking for verifying that these checkers report zero. So for example, if you're doing this in Mocha, you would say check string, of cow should have length of zero. However, check string, empty string, you're not really concerned about exactly how many errors, you just know that it should have length above zero. So that way you can verify that this should trigger at least one error, in that case, the not blank error function. That is the basics of checkers, and this allows us to put many, many different validators to it. Tomorrow, we'll take these checker functions, we'll build a bunch of them, and add them to the REST API over here that will validate this zip, as well as the parameters that are coming in on the request.